Hello, it's Two Texas Medics again, part two of canned layered chili. So we've got a recipe up here again. If you want to take another quick peek, we can also post it on the uh, at the end here if you'd like to take a better look. Okay, so what I've got is I've got my pressure canner, a little bit of water just starting to barely warm up. I've got it on low heat right now. Uh, so it's empty, it's getting ready. I've got my ground beef at all of our ingredients that we listed before. Okay, the tomato sauce, the chilies, the onions, all this stuff. Again, I want to reiterate, the beans we're using are dried beans. You buy them in the bag in one pound, three pound, 50 pound bags, dried beans. Uh, most people use uh, cooked chili when they can it. We're doing this dry. The pressure canner will cook the beans, I promise you. So, got our beans. Here I've already started with some of the jars I've pre-filled. Uh, I'm going to show you what it's going to look like as we layer it and then as we fill it. Um, so, here we go. So basically we start off with a quarter cup of ground of dried beans in each jar. Okay, there's one and there's another. And we're going to go to our ground beef and we're going to do two-thirds cup of ground beef and I just kind of eat it off this beef, don't forget, is cooked, drained, and rinsed. Okay, there's one-third, there's two-thirds. If you want to use chili meat, oh, it's filled, and you like the bigger chunks, then you can do that. You're going to do this however you like to do it, however you like to make your chili. This is just canned chili to be easier. Pull it from the shelf in the wintertime and five-minute dinner. Okay, so we've got our ground beef, and we're going to do a quarter cup of our chopped tomatoes. Again, I'm using the canned tomatoes. i got a quarter cup here. Layer that right on top. Okay, and again, and the juice, I don't drain the juice. Juice just makes it better because you're going to add water to it. Just add some more tomato flavor to it. Uh, so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do two tablespoons of chopped onion. Let me reach around. And if you like more onion, use more onion. We are so-so eh, onion people. So it's two tablespoons of onion in each jar right on top. About two tablespoons. Okay, after our onion, we're going to do the chopped green chilies. Again, two tablespoons of chopped green chilies. I did the whole chilies, put them in my food processor, chopped them up, mainly because I couldn't find the chilies that were already chopped. Um, otherwise, I would have bought them pre-chopped. And if you like it spicier, add more chilies. Less onion, more chilies, more onion, less chilies, however you like it. So then next we're going to do is one tablespoon plus one half teaspoon of tomato sauce. Okay. So I do one. That's one tablespoon. And then we switch. That's where it gets messy. Half teaspoon and a half teaspoon. Okay. After the tomato sauce, then we're going to do a tablespoon of chili powder. Okay. Any brand that you like, whichever flavor, if you like it, we use a certain brand, and, and we, that's the one that we like, and we haven't changed from it since. Right there on top. All this is going to get mixed together as we pour that hot water over it at the end. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do half a teaspoon of salt. You can do more, you can do less. I'm doing a quarter teaspoon because I would rather add salt at the end when it's cooked. We don't eat a lot of salt in our food as it is, so if I find that it needs more salt later, I can add, but I cannot take away. Also, I use sea salt. Uh, I prefer the taste of sea salt better than regular iodized table salt. Uh, but you can use either one. So next thing we're going to need is an eighth of a teaspoon of cumin. Again, I want to, I didn't say this in the first video, but this is the ground cominos. When you grind them, it makes a powder, which is then cumin. If you want to buy the already ground 
cumin, that's what you're going to look for. If you have cominos in your house, the whole ones, and you want to grind them, that's what we had, that's what we did. It's the same thing. <clears throat> and then we're going to do an eighth of a teaspoon, again, of cayenne pepper. Uh, if you want it spicier, add more. If you don't like it spicy, don't add it at all. You can always add it later. If you got kids running around, you don't want it hot and spicy, then mom and dad can add it later and kids can have it plain. Then you're going to do a dash of black pepper. This is going to be to your liking. If you like a lot, add a lot. If you don't, don't. We do about oh, a quarter to half a teaspoon of black pepper just right there on the top. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to add your hot water. And what I've done is I've just heated up some water in the microwave. It doesn't have to be boiling just hot and here you're going to fill your jars all the way until you leave one inch of headspace okay so one inch of headspace I'll show you in just a second because so we're going to fill these up and then we're going to get some air pockets out whenever you do this kind of stuff you want to get the air pockets out and make sure you get as much in there as you can okay got our handy dandy little canning tool here so you just take this in Kind of stick it down there and just let that water get down to the bottom, getting those air pockets out. Otherwise, you'll have an uneven cooked uh, product. And then, of course, at the end, if you've never canned and you, you may not know this, at the end, you're always going to want to wipe your rims before you put your rings on there. Okay, make sure they're clean, dry, no food particles. A little bit of water doesn't hurt. You just don't want any food particles on those rings. So we're going to add a little bit more water here until we get to our one inch head space. And if you have this tool here, uh, you can do the easy way. And you can just, the top line there is the one inch, put it there. We're right at one inch, if you can see that. Okay and then again here. Another rule of thumb that I use for one inch is pretty simple. The bottom ring of your jar, that between there and there is one inch, so if you fill it to that bottom ring, you, that leaves you an inch of headspace. I'm going to go ahead and poke these again to make sure I get all the air pockets out and my water gets down to the bottom as much as I can. I want to cook these as evenly as possible. This one can use a little bit more water. Just a tad, and there we go. Okay, so we're going to take this, I'm going to set this down. <clears throat> now we're going to take our clean, dry rag. Sorry, not dry, but wet. We're going to take our clean, wet rag, and we're going to wipe the rims. Each of these jars, making sure there's no food particles. more here. Again, if you leave a drop or two of water, not a big deal. Food particles, it is. If you leave food particles, your jars won't seal. If they don't seal, no big deal. Um, if they don't seal, you just stick it in your fridge and you can eat it later in the next couple days. Uh, but you cannot put it on the shelf and I don't believe you can reprocess it. So, we've got our jars wiped off and then we're going to take our little magnetic jar lid getter and we're going to get each lid and just set it right there on top and get another lid try to separate them oh, my handy dandy helper is Handing me the pot, making it a lot easier. I'll just set that right there, and hopefully not dump everything off. That's my handy dandy helper again.
try not, well, don't try, don't touch the underside of these lids with your hands. Uh, if you have any contaminants on your hands, uh, you're going to contaminate your food and that could just, that could be a wasted product at the end. It'll spoil very easily, so you want to try to keep this very clean as possible, as possible. Okay, so we've got our lids on. Now, I'm going to grab my rings. And our rings we're just going to hand tighten, okay? You don't crank down on them. They're going to they're going to loosen a little bit in that pressure canner. Come back and tighten these a little bit better in a sec. Last one, and hand tighten. You gotta only hand tighten them because you're they're gonna pressure the pressure is gonna release as they cook in that pot. Okay, these aren't super hot, so I can actually lift them with my hands. I'm gonna sit them down in the pressure canner. This will hold seven pints on the bottom. And I have another uh, rack that I can put on top, and I can layer a second layer of pints to total 14 in this batch. You cannot do that with quartz. You can only do that with pints. You just run out of room with quartz. It's going to take every bit of room we got here. And the last one here, right there. Okay, so seven. And I'm going to add my second layer. Uh, right now I don't have any to put in there today. We're just going to do the seven that we've got. Uh, but I'm going to show you. You're going to put your pressure canner lid on according to its instructions. You put that lid on. You're going to let it build up steam. I'm going to turn my heat up here. You're going to let it build up some steam. When that steam starts coming out, you're going to add your weight right there. You're going to build your, your pressure. needs to be, you need to cook this pints for 75 minutes, 10 pounds of pressure. If you're doing quartz, you're going to do 90 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. I personally do 11 pounds because once you reach 10, if you fall below 10 at any time, you have to start your time over. So I go with 11 pounds because if I fall down to 10, it's no big deal. I don't have to start over. It gives me just a little bit of leeway. So I do 11 pounds, but you have to do it at least at 10 pounds. You don't want to go much over 11. So 75 minutes for pints, 90 minutes for quarts. As soon as we're done with these, we're going to get you the third video, and we're going to show you what the finished product looks like.